This AM5 motherboard is darn near perfect, with one small exception. What's up guys, it's Bert with Fours and Pours, uh, and today we have something a little different for you. So, we're gonna be stepping away from our typical content uh, and diving into some new tech stuff. So, in fact, over the next few weeks, you'll probably see a few more of these videos. You see, my editing and gaming rig completely crapped out on me. On to bigger and better things. Every problem presents an opportunity. So what we're gonna be doing is building a top tier gaming rig, complete with all the new components dropping this fall. And we'll be starting with a Zen 4 Ryzen 7950X CPU. Which brings us to today's topic. You see, new socket means new motherboard. Uh, and I wanted to take you guys through my choice, the Asus Rogue Strix X670E-A. Oh, that's a mouthful. No, but don't blame me for the name. Um, this thing is pretty great. In fact, I think it's one of the best fits out there for a lot of people. And I scoured YouTube and I don't see anybody talking about it, anybody doing an overview, anybody telling you about it. So I wanted to step in and do that for you guys. First off, before we get into the tech talk, let's talk about the aesthetics. This thing is a pretty board. And let's be honest, that matters. You're probably gonna put this in a glass sided case and show it off, right? It is one of the only AM5 motherboards rolling with the white aesthetic. And I'd say it's more silver or moon white, if you wanna use ASUS's marketing buzzwords. Uh, but that was a big factor for me, since it's going in a white Lee and Lee 011 Evo case. But pretty looks isn't all this thing has going for it. So let me take you through some of the more technical side of things. This board is loaded down with four M.2 slots. Um, you have two Gen 5 M.2s here and here, uh, along with two Gen 4 slots here and here that share a heat sink. And these heat sinks are more than enough to keep your cutting edge storage from getting all roasty toasty. There's also a heat sink running across the chipset right here in the middle to help keep the board cool. And speaking of heat sinks, check out this chonkin bad boy of a heat sink on the VRM. This thing is massive and heavy, which should make dissipating all the heat from a 7950X a breeze. No pun intended. On the subject of VRMs, we actually have our first and really only fault in my book, um, but it's not even really a fault. So this board has a 16 plus two team phase 70 amp power supply. If you've been looking at other X670E boards, you probably notice that most are packing 18 to 20 phase VRMs pushing anywhere from 90 to 110 amps. Um, so you might think this board's underpowered, right? Absolutely not. In fact, even under a max load for a 7950X, you're only pulling 230 watts. The highest I've seen, aside from some crazy LN2 overclockers, um, has been around 250 watts. At that power level, this VRM will barely crack a sweat. So this board isn't really underpowered, it's just that most other X670E boards are way overpowered. And if you even look at the VRM, I mean, the capacitors on this are excellent, high quality. Asus made sure they designed it really well. In fact, on the topic of overpowered versus underpowered, another YouTuber, and I'll link this in the description, did a test on a similar VRM with the heatsink completely removed and a 7950X. He still barely cracked 75C. So worst case scenario, this bad boy won't even get warm to the touch. Now let's wrap this overview up with a quick look at the headers in the rear IO. So there's nothing too crazy here on the rear IO. Um, you have your full complement of audio ports, the connections for your Wi-Fi. Um, I do want to point out that these are all Gen 3 USBs. So 
more than adequate ports for all your connections, two USB type C's, and one of these is a actual 20 bit, 20 gigabit, excuse me, um, type C plug, two and a half gigabit LAN connection. Um, one cool thing is, and you would expect this on an X670E board, is you do have a, a clear CMOS button and you do have a BIOS flashback. So if you really wanna get in there and do some heavy tweaking and make a mistake, it'll be just fine. Uh, on top of everything else, you have one display port out, one HDMI port out. We're not gonna be using that because we're gonna be slapping a, a RTX 4090 in this bad boy when they come in. And I would like to point out the aesthetics on the back. I mean, you're never gonna see this, right? So Asus really only did this for you. And it looks beautiful to me. That's it for me, guys. I just wanted to quickly go over some of the features and specs of this board. Um, I haven't seen a lot of information out there on YouTube about it. I know I was looking for reviews before I purchased it and I had to dig really deep to find stuff. Um, hopefully I answered some of your questions. If you have any more, make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Um, make sure you hit that notification bell. We're going to be going through this entire build. And then when we're done, we're going to benchmark everything. And I'm telling you, we're putting all current gen stuff in there. So I'm talking... We're gonna do a 4090 for the GPU, X670E motherboard, 7950X on the chipset. We're gonna do DDR5 6000 RAM since that's what the sweet spot supposedly is. Um, and Gen 4, and then eventually Gen 5 NVMEs as our memory. So follow along. I think this is gonna be a pretty crazy build and this will be one that I'm really looking forward to doing. Thanks guys.